Hi, this is Alan again. I'm doing an oxygen checkup using a simple mask. Um, I have Savannah who's going to be helping me during this demonstration. Uh, if I was in the respiratory department and I received a requisition to place a, a mishatch on a uh, simple mask, that's an, uh, a variable O2 device. It's a reservoir mask that delivers between 35 to 50 percent oxygen and has to run between a 5 liters to 10 liters per minute. A minimum of 5 liters is required for a simple mask so that the CO2 that she exhales is able to be flushed out of that mask. A simple mask again is one of the, one of the three reservoir masks that we will use and it is the simplest of the three. Uh, if I have my requisition I would gather my equipment, I would have my stethoscope, my watch, I'd get my pulse oximeter, I'd get my simple mask which is sometimes just referred to as an oxygen mask and I'd have my requisition. I would go to the patient's floor I'd get to go to their chart. I check their chart for the uh, for the physician's order as to uh, what they want me to deliver to the patient, and then I'd look for the indication as to what am I trying to achieve. What is the goal of delivering delivering this oxygen to the, this patient? And so it would be to relieve hypoxemia, decrease the work of breathing, or decrease the work of the heart. Then I would go further into the chart and look at the nurse's notes, the respiratory notes, and the physician's notes. Look at the progress notes and the history and to see as if there was some hypoxemia that would be indicated with the decreased PaO2, decreased SaO2, decreased CaO2, or the signs and symptoms of um, shortness of breath. Uh, I could look and see if maybe the patient had some kind of cardiac history. Maybe they have had some uh, acute MI or a recent MI or some heart surgery. Uh, I'd also look for the physical signs and symptoms of shortness of breath, maybe indicated by the nursing or respiratory prior previously to me coming to the patient's room. And um, I would make sure that there wasn't a reason for this patient to be on a higher level of oxygen, such as maybe they had carbon monoxide poisoning, in which I would want to put them on 100% oxygen, not a simple mask. But once I've identified the reason as to why they're on and what they need to be on, I need to make sure that I know that I have the right patient. So I look at the patient's name in the chart and I get the patient's name and patient identification number, number, medical record number, and their date of birth. I'd match it up to my requisition and when that all agreed, I have the right reason for the right patient to deliver the oxygen and I can proceed to the room. I'd go to the room and I... Hi, Ms. Hatch. My name is Alan. I'm from Respiratory. I'm here to put you on some oxygen. Okay, how are you feeling? I feel okay. I'm just a little short of breath. Oh, okay. How long have you been feeling short of breath, Ms. Hatch? Um, probably the last, I'd say, 24 hours. Last well, 24 hours? Okay. Uh, if you ever start feeling short of breath like that, uh, please don't wait so long. Let okay. your nurse know sooner so they can call respiratory and we can come and place you on some oxygen. Okay. Um, your doctor did uh, say that for us to put you on oxygen because you did say you were feeling some shortness of breath. Okay. At this point, I'd come over, I'd check her ID, and you are Mrs. Savannah Hatch. You're Savannah Hatch, and your date of birth? 428-89. Okay, and your medical record number matches up, and your patient identification. Okay, good. So I do have the right patient. Uh, Ms. Hatch, your doctor's ordered you to be on some oxygen, which should relieve you of your um, shortness of breath. Uh, I have to tell you that if you're wearing oxygen, if you start feeling lightheaded, dizzy, nauseous, or any way uh, out of the normal, maybe tremors or shakes, you need to let the nurses know and let them get in contact with us so I can reevaluate you. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. The second thing I need to make sure that you know is there's absolutely positively no smoking allowed when you're wearing oxygen. Um, I need to limit the use of electronic devices and any kind of hand lotions or facial lotions, you need to check with the nurse first before using. The reason we say that is because anything that can burn in the presence of room air will burn hotter and faster in the presence of pure oxygen, and we don't want you to get hurt. So do you understand that? Yes. Okay, do you have any questions? I do not. Okay, and there's no other family members in the room, so I would, if there were, I would confirm with, confirm with them that they understood, and I would ask the patient if the family member could stay in the room while we continue with the procedure. At this point, I would check the patient's heart rate, respiratory rate, sat, color, level of dyspnea. So I checked their heart rate, I checked their respiratory rate, and if for some reason I couldn't get a very good heart rate or a respiratory rate, had a hard time determining that, I could do this using my stethoscope, 
and I could put it over her heart, and I could get her heart rate that way. And then I can also put it over her trachea and hear air going in and out, and that would give me her respiratory rate. Check her saturation, I'd use something called the pulse oximeter, which measures the saturation of the hemoglobin molecule. And unless she's been exposed to carbon monoxide, it's a pretty good indicator of how well the, hemo uh, the hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen. So I'd put it on her finger, and I would get a saturation, and she is correct. Her saturation right now is 90%, and we would really want to be shooting between 95 to 100%, and 90% is a little low. I look at her nail beds. There's a little bluish discoloration, which show me that there is some cyanosis going on. I don't see any real nasal flaring, but there is a little bit of accessory muscle use when I was a little closer to her, I could tell. At this point, I finished my physical assessment, and now I would set up my equipment. And she has been uh, ordered to be placed on a simple mask, an O2 mask, which is the first of the reservoir masks. And this mask has to run at a minimum of five liters per minute to clear out CO2 and a maximum of 10 liters per minute. The FiO2 range is 35 to 50 percent, and at 5 liters per minute, it's going to deliver approximately 35 percent. At 10 liters, it's going to deliver 50 percent. There are five more liters from 5 liters to 10 liters, and each liter will increase the FiO2 approximately by 3 percent. So you can figure the math on that. But right now, we have an order for a 35 percent Simple mess, so I would turn this on to five liters per minute. Okay, can you feel that flow? Mm -hmm. Okay, and at this point, I'd place the mask on the patient, make sure there's a comfortable fit. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and now I would reassess my patient their heart rate, respiratory rate, sat color level of dyspnea. I'd reassess them and tell them about. Ma'am, you need to make sure again if you're wearing any kind of, uh, if you're going to have any lotions, hand lotions or facial lotions, check with the nurse first. Absolutely no smoking. And uh, if you start feeling lightheaded, dizzy, nauseous, or feeling any kind of shakes or tremors, you're going to let the nurse know and limit your use to electronic devices. Do you have any questions for me? No. No? Okay. At that point, I would have already reassessed my patient's heart rate, respiratory rate, sac color, and level of dyspnea to assure that I could leave from the room. I would wash my hands. I would take my documentation sheet. And now I would proceed out of the room. I'd place on the room a no smoking sign, oxygen use sign, and then I would chart the patient's therapy.